Well, here we are out on the lake, uh, trying out some sailing on a sail kayak, the Hobie Adventure Island TI. So this should be an interesting adventure. Got my GoPros, get some footage, and uh, we'll see how this goes. The Hobie Adventure Island TI is a two-person tandem, that's what the TI stands for, essentially kayak that uses the Mirage Drive that Hobies are known for, where you can use your feet to pedal and has these flippers that kind of move you forward, while also having Almas or Amas that are stand on both sides of the kayak to essentially make a trimaran. This is then coupled with a sail system that has a furl that you can then unfurl and furl by winding it up on the mast in order to use it as a sailboat also. It does have a dagger board that you deploy in order to provide that lateral stability so you don't get pushed through the water. But for maneuvering in the marinas, you don't have to use paddles at all. You have a rudder that you control with your left hand and you have pedals that you kind of push back and forth like a Stairmaster or something like that in order to propel you through the water. That system works very well and you can take off all the other doodads and just use it as a, a giant tandem kayak as well for normal kind of day to day if you don't want to use it as a sailboat or a sailing platform. So this is my first experience with something like this and I'm very much a novice sailor. So heading out into the water, it was time to unfurl. And to unfurl you essentially pull on the main sheet, or so that would be the line that you use to trim your sail so that it unwinds everything. And you are off right after that. Get things trimmed up and uh, away you go. This was on Cuca Lake up in the Finger Lakes and it was a particularly windy day, so it was a perfect day for this kind of testing. The thing is very stable as far as rolling over just because it is so big and has the amas that are the pontoons on the side in order to help support you and uh, provide that additional flip reduction possibility. Not impossible, but you'd have to work pretty hard at it. This was my first tack. The nice part is, is when you go into irons or when you're going into the wind on the tack, you can pedal your way through it and I did a bunch of things wrong here. I definitely, I should not have loosened up the main and I should have just kind of built up a little bit more momentum to go through it. But once I got to the other side and trimmed it up, we were fine. You can get a jib kit for it. Well, they call it a spinnaker kit, but it, it actually functions more like a jib and how it looks. And that'll help you more for downwind the way that it's set up. Maybe can help you go into the wind a little bit. This is another tack, a little bit smoother worked at it a little bit more just kind of worked it a little bit harder in order to uh, keep things tightened up but I did keep loosening up that main and in hindsight that wasn't the ideal way to do it she'll make some pretty good speeds actually going on a beam reach or maybe even going up a little bit of a close reach she would get up to probably about seven, eight miles per hour. I didn't have it by knots, but uh, and she'll do more than that even. And uh, this is just my novice sailing. Beautiful day out on Lake Cuca up in the Finger Lakes. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, took out from a marina that I rented this from up in Penyan, and it was just a lovely day. Going to unfurl again here. Just pull on the main after you loosen up the furl line off, trim it up and go. Now this is not a dry sailing experience. They do make spray skirts for the front of it and some shrouds, but this is not a dry experience. There are trampolines that you can get for holding more gear and also keeping some of the spray off you too that will connect for the center of the boat with the AMA pontoons on the sides. If you look online, you'll actually see people that have done that and hold other layer people on those trampolines because it can hold a pretty good bit of weight once they're trimmed in properly. Here I just wanted to show getting set up for attack. So essentially I loosened up the main a little bit, which I shouldn't have. I turned the rudder into the wind. Pedal my th way through irons whenever I'm not really getting any use out of the sail. As you can see, it's just luffing. And once I get established back on the other side, trim the main as needed, and yeah, we're good. You can see we're leaning now the other way as it's healing too, and away we go.
I decided it was time to experiment from the back of the boat since there are two seats and two Mirage drives. So if you have two people with you, you can pedal in tandem in order to drive this thing. But from the back, it definitely felt a lot more comfortable, kind of less water spraying up on you because you have that front position empty and you're further away from where that's coming across. And overall, I think that's a better sailing experience in my opinion. The only thing I would say, the only caveat to that is the way that the main comes across and where the main sheet wraps around, it does tend to kind of get behind your head in other places. I've seen some wonderful modifications to this thing online. People do some amazing things with this boat setup, especially for going fishing in the ocean. Um, one of the things they do is there are ways that you can route that main sheet so that it's less of an issue when you're sitting in the back. And then people tend to use the trampolines in the front for storage. So this is sailing with the wind at 6.4 compared with when I was going against the wind at 6.4. Obviously a lot calmer experience because of the relative wind change. She's pretty feastful going with the wind. Definitely if you're familiar with sailing, you know running with the wind is a quieter experience for the most part. Just got to watch out for the accidental jibe where the boom may swoop over to the other side. But since there is no boom, less of a worry here. As the worst that'll happen is you'll just have the sheet go across your head. That's a jibe right there. Just moving into a different direction of the wind in order to get the sail on the other side of the boat. And sometimes that's a little bit of a more efficient way of sailing rather than going dead with the wind. Uh, that way you go a little bit of an angle and jibe it back and forth if you need to, depending on how the wind is. Working my way back to the marina here because we had that wind coming out of the south all the way over that I was fighting desperately through most of my experience on the water that day. And you can see that's it coming up. At this point, I'm getting ready to haul in the main and use the furler in order to wind the sail back up. And you can see I'm pulling on this yellow line here. And it's just as easy as that, then you no longer have the sail being your main driving force. I will say it is important to fasten the last bit of that sail around and tie it down because you will get drive off of the wind still that you may not want when you're maneuvering around if you don't have that fully wrapped. Now it's time to go back to human power, go to pedal power. You can use your paddles also, but pedals are definitely much more efficient and, and your legs are the strongest muscles in your body, really. And then you can still use the rudder in order to maneuver your way back into the marina. As you pull in closer to the shallows, it's time to raise up your rudder if you need to, but uh, otherwise just bring up the dagger board. It's where your right hand is on the right side of your body. It is a little bit inaccessible if you're in the back seat in order to have to reach up to pull the dagger board up and down, but it's not something you will be doing often anyways. Overall, this was a fantastic experience. It was a blast. I absolutely loved it. I think it's a really great piece of equipment. I think it's really designed well. However, the entire setup with trailer and maybe adding a spinnaker kit and trampolines, you're looking at $10,000. You have to decide, is that really right for you versus getting an old sailboat that you can do some traditional sailing that goes into wind a little bit better for you. It is great though, uh, just pricey. And you can take off those amas and use it as a kayak. Until next time, we'll see you here on Jerfish Entertainment and I don't know, maybe Jerfish Sailing.